try it? Yeah, I'll try it. I don't have a longer cord. You didn't know that the cord is broken. Okay. Um, I'll make sure I won't step on it. Okay. It, it was cutting on it. It just no, it was loose or not. Thank you, sir. I want to just say a quick word before I pray about anything. I'm just honored. We are honored to be here. Tonight is going to be one of the special nights. Sometimes we think if we're not in a large building and there's no television cameras, God's not going to do something special. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be more wrong than that. When I first came to America in 88, some of the greatest meetings that I preached between 1988 and 1992, some, one time we were in Stockbridge, Georgia, and the Holy Spirit fell. Six people left their bodies and went to heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> when they came back the next day, they couldn't speak. It took two days before they could talk and talk about the glory of heaven. Yeah. We live so much in a world that is natural that we're so oft, so seldom expecting what we call the supernatural. It's really God and his glory. Yeah. But um, let's, let's, welcome, let's welcome the Lord tonight. Thank you, Brother Tim. I think you can tell he's excited. <laughs> He wants to introduce me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good preaching, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's amazing when you think back about times. I just want to say this even before I pray. There's Steve Neal in the back there. I knew it. And, uh, he knew I was going to put him on the spot. Being a close friend, part of my life since 97, and you from 98. Yes, sir. And then tonight we have Brent and Melissa Luck, 2000 was when I met you. And uh, been amazing times that we've had together. Haven't seen you for a while and just honored, we're honored to have you here tonight. This man is an amazing minister. You know, he's, uh, if ever he's close with me and, and, and you can't do anything, he can do it all. He can preach, he can sing, he can worship, he can sing opera. He, he can just about do it all, man. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Precious man of God, Melissa, precious people. Hallelujah. I want to say this tonight. Last night, we uh, had everybody in the house here. We have new people, visiting people. We're so happy you're here. And last night, I was talking about some of you that have laid your life down to support this ministry. Really, everybody here last night, what was in the meeting, was a, a, a partner and is a partner of the ministry last night. Um, I want to make a quick comment just to explain something, then we're going to pray and move on. On the Tuesday, August the 17th, 1993, I experienced something people talk about visions like they occur every day. And even when you are standing in the prophet's office, you don't have visions every day. There may be a time when you may have, you know, a few over a period of a few months. But that, even that is exceptional. And so I've only had a very small number of open visions in 37 years of ministry. But that morning I did. It was the morning service. I was in a place called Spindle, North Carolina. And as I stood preaching, suddenly everything disappeared. And I stood in this incredibly beautiful golden room. I began to recognize the furniture pieces as the Holy of Holies of the Old Testament. And everything, the people disappeared, everything. And then this new message came out of me and uh, just took over. I, I preached this whole message while looking at the building. I didn't see the people until right towards the end, everything came back. In time to come after that, the Lord said to me, my house of old, and it was part of the message, was the house of golden glory of Israel. He says, I now have a new house, the household of faith, which is also intended to be a house of golden glory. But it hasn't been. I will cause this house to become a house of gold and glory. I'm raising up a house of gold and glory for the last day glorious end time manifestation of God all over the earth. My church will be the house of gold and glory. A few years later, the Lord told me to write a book regarding that. I wrote the book, called it the golden glory of the end time church. Long story short, 
I'm going to need some help with the sound tonight. My voice is a little tired. If you can give me a little bit more treble and a little bit more volume, Jenny, I'll be I'll appreciate it. It'd be great. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then in May of 2017, this is great. Thank you. In May of 2017, something happened that nobody really took notice of. The reason is, and you know, I can be frank, especially prophetic and only counsel. You know, I'm frank times two, and you don't want to be ugly with people. You just, you just, there's just that anointing that speaks directly. In May of 2017, the church reached an incredible landmark that was noticed. The church reached 70 years of the last generation. 70 years is the official number of a generation. And the great healing revival introduced the last generation of the church in May of 1947. And so in May of 2017, the church reached the 70-year mark. Now God can stretch that to 80, and he's obviously doing that. But that's the official number. What a lot of people may not realize is that the next year, on May 14, 2018, Israel reached her 70-year mark or the maturing point of the generation. What is also not realized is that May of 1946, and I got all this in the book, there were some political events that launched the last generation of the Gentiles or the ungodly. Come on. So 46 to 2016, the Gentiles. 47 to 2017, the church. 48 to 2018, the church. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 10, 32, he says basically that give no offense to either the Jews, the Gentiles, or the church of God. As far as God is concerned, those are the three categories of people on the earth. Come on. The Jews, the Gentiles, the church of God. And so every one of them has a final generation and has reached the 70 year mark of all three of those. So we are now into overtime. Come on. That's it. Hello. Uh, yes. Jesus said, that's if you believe Jesus. Most people don't. Come on. Most Christians don't. I used this example last night that if Publishing Clearinghouse would call you and say, Excuse me, sir. Uh, I know they don't call you, but we're going to meet your house Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, October 21st. You have won the Publishing Clearing House next award, which means $1,000 a day for the rest of your life. Uh, I think you're going to show some excitement regarding that. Come on. And you're not going out at 3 o'clock or quarter to 4 on Sunday afternoon to go and do some grocery shopping at Walmart. You ain't going to no mart. You're staying at home mart. Come on. Because you're waiting for them to come with all their balloons and stuff and knock on that front door. You're going to take a shower, put on your best dress or clothes or suit or clothing and waiting there. And from three o'clock on, you're sitting there like this. Oh my God. I can't believe it. I can only wait. Oh my God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And for a whole hour, you, hour you're bouncing there and rejoicing. Hallelujah. Because guess what? You will be excited. Yeah. Nobody excited about that? Okay, I'm fine. You. <laughs> you will be excited if it's you. I promise you. Yeah. And you will express that excitement. Hello. Come on. Jesus said, you know, that's if you believe Jesus. Jesus said, when the fig tree blossoms. Now remember, Jesus was speaking Jewish vernacular. We don't know that in the church. We're going to learn that one of these days. He wasn't speaking to us. He was speaking to Israel. He's speaking to the Jews. That's why he was using Jewish vernacular. He said, when the fig tree blossoms, one generation will not pass and all these things will come to pass and all will return. One generation is not 40 years. 40 years is a government generation. 70 to 80 years is the lifespan or the duration of a generation. We have now concluded 72 years of the last generation. A harvest season, the proper harvest season is seven years. Okay, they didn't get that, so I've got to get some calculators down. Now, we don't know the absolute accuracy of time. That's God's business. But we know the closeness of it just by a simple, simple thing I've just said. So you would think, based on what I just said, every pastor would get out of church on Sunday and say, Hey folks, we've got to get ready. Because before he comes back, there are many prophetic things which might come to, come to pass. 
He's going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. He's going to shake the whole universe. Our people are going to start running to the Lord. He's going to pour out the Spirit upon all flesh. Signs and wonders and miracles are going to take place. And Jesus is coming for His harvest. And His harvest is Shabbat. Come on. Yeah. Shabbat is Pentecost. Yeah. It amazes me how people talk about it. I don't know what they're talking about. Shabbat means that the, the root of it. The, the heart of it is God says, I've blessed it to Israel in the Old Testament. I've blessed your hands with the ability to reap the harvest. I have anointed your hands that you may bring in the full harvest. Come on. That means nothing, hardly anything slips through your fingers. Whoa. And a Shavuot harvest of barley and wheat means you strip, you know, you can't put a percentage to it, but between 90 and 95 percent. If not, Shavuot is a failure. God did not give Israel a failure type Shavuot. He said, I bless your harvest. I bless the field. I bless you. And I bless you with the ability to reap this harvest with great success. So Pentecost harvest, everybody says, well, there's going to be a final Pentecost. Yes, there is. That means God will strip the fields of the earth. Come on. And I pray so, and I said, Lord, I wish you would do to other people you do to me. Because back in 1981, I'm a Bible school student in South Africa, in, in Rama there, and, and I'm just sitting. I'm just sitting at my, at my table, my desk one day, and it's like, it, it was literally like the Lord pulled the roof back, stuck his mouth in and screamed at me. The sound was so loud that my body went into glorious shock. When I came to, I found myself 15 feet away against the wall in a fetal position shaking. He screamed at me and said, you know from the background of your family, because part of my family is Jewish, you know what Shabbat means. Why do you not believe in my end time harvest? Come screamed on. at me. Come on. Why do you not believe in my end time harvest? Screamed the second time. By that time, I'm weeping. I'm crying. I'm so, please help me. I'm mercy. I'm so sorry. Oh, I don't know what I do. I repent. I'm sorry. I forgive me. He said, you know what Shabbat means. You know what it is all about. How come you do not believe in my end time harvest? Come on. I said, Lord, I thought I did. He said, no. You believe like most Christians. The devil gets a bunch. I get a bunch. Then the devil gets a bunch. I get a bunch. He said, the harvest of the fields of the earth are mine. Come they on. do not belong to the devil. The devil is not going to get them. They are mine. They belong to me. They are my shalot. Yeah, come on. Preach it. Come on. What does that mean? That means that we are, within a year or two or three, from the greatest explosion that has ever taken place on this planet. Come on. Glory. God knows that and rejoices. The devil knows that and vomits in a bucket in hell every day. Come on. The church knows squad devil and sleeps on. Amen. We should be right now so excited, so on fire, so ready. So, okay, Lord, what do I do next? How do I get ready? But there's a, there's a slumber that has come through the church. But the fire of God's on its way. I'm not talking about when you're on Sunday morning, have a good worship time, you feel it a little bit hot. We think that's the fire. I'm from Africa. I know fire. We made a lot of fires outside. We did a lot of outside fire and camping and stuff. You don't make a huge, big campfire there and put some gasoline on it and all the good kind of wood and then step in the middle of the fire and says, I think I have some fire. There. Come on. <laughs> It'll burn your butt, honey. And you'll jump out of that fire burning and screaming. Come on. In the past, we've been so meetings with the Lord said, I'm going to pour out some fire as a prelude to what's coming. People were screaming, running up and down, stupid, some of the meetings, screaming, burning. People thought, oh, it's demons. It's not demons. They're burned by the fire of God. The next day, their lives had changed. The next day, they're knocking on neighbor's door, saying, listen, I'm going to talk to you about Jesus. Glory to God. You see, <laughs> when the fire hits you, that's when they bring in the harvest. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. All right, I'm yeah. pretending I'm not supposed to. Okay, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We are blessed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, no, no. I, I, I want us to, to change a little bit here. Um, we are blessed and honored to have some musicians with us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I was wondering, we, we're going to ask uh, Brother Brent to come. Would you like to come and just minister a couple of songs and how the Lord leads you? And then after that, if you guys want to do the same thing, just, just be, just be, just be hunky dory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't know what you would need to get all the stuff turned on there and everything. Hallelujah. We take all that out of the way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Would you just all stand? Let's, let's, welcome, let's welcome Holy Spirit. Yeah. Praise God. Let's get a little excited about tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Yeah. 
coming from and where it's going so is everyone that's born of the spirit that same wind of God's spirit is still blowing in the earth today is still blowing tonight still blowing in this place tonight just breathe I always said if you can breathe you can receive the anointing of the spirit of God just breathe right now. Yeah, we're going to pray for sick people tonight, but right now, just begin to receive. He'll heal you. He'll fill you. He'll touch you, Lord. Thank you for this anointed worship. He's flowing in the house. Just drink him in right now. Just release a little bit of hunger and a little, little bit of faith and a little bit of action. Just drink him in right now. Holy Spirit, fill us. Let your anointing fill us. Let your anointing fill us. Let your anointing fill us. Let your healing power flow through us. Heal us in our mind. Heal us in our bodies. Heal us in our soul. Heal us from the top to the bottom, inside out, outside in. Let your healing virtue flow through the house right now in Jesus' name. Breathe. Just breathe. Breathe. Ooh, I tell you, I see the anointing on some people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. And a fire that burns within. A fire that burns within. A fire that burns within. within. For I will set the flames. Not just a flame. I will set the flames of God ablaze in you. And I will burn the furnace of God in your heart. Hallelujah. I will set you ablaze by my spirit. For I am a consuming, cleansing, purifying, perfecting fire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Pain leave the bodies. Infirmity leave. Sickness, disease leave. We take authority in Jesus' name, by His name, by His Spirit, through His Spirit. Right now, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Even encouragement will come. Discouragement will go. Sickness, pain will go. Discouragement will go. Hallelujah. Let the healing power of God come. Lord, even tonight, you're going to pour a fresh anointing on the people. Hallelujah. Start right now. We ask you in Jesus' name. We thank you for everybody watching this program now, live or later. We thank you, Lord, for touching them by your spirit. We rebuke, we curse every sickness and disease, every infirmity, the work of every spirit, suicide, bondage, sickness, oppression, misery. I curse you in Jesus' name. I take authority over you. Lord, I speak to every person watching and I say, let the Spirit of God be upon you right now in Jesus' name. You'll feel Him right there when you're watching in Jesus' name. He is upon you. Hallelujah. Thank God He's not limited by anything. He's not limited by technology. It's like you are here. So right now, just receive from the Lord. Just say, thank you, Lord. I receive your anointing. I receive your presence. I receive your fire. I receive your touch. I receive your healing. I receive your blessing. I drink it in. Just like you breathe. Just put a little bit of faith into it. A little more hunger into it. And just breathe in Jesus' name right now. Be touched. Be healed. Be filled. Be changed. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just, I just hear celebrate. It's not strange. I, I, I know, I know what we did last night. We prayed for two. But I, I hear this sugar diabetes. I, I just heard it. Sugar diabetes. In Jesus' name, I curse you. Arthritis, I curse you in Jesus' name. Somebody has something with a blockage in their sinuses or their nose that keeps coming up. I curse it in Jesus' name. Leave her right now in Jesus' name. Depart right now. Right now, not a dead just, just this terrible pain. And of course, this applies to everybody that's watching my, my, my life. This terrible pain in the knees, cartilages in the knees. In Jesus' name, is I see you. You try to get up in the morning, and you, it's, it's such a pain and effort just to get out of a chair. In Jesus' name, new cartilages, new knees. In Jesus' name, amen. 
mono bronchitis or get it, get it. So, so many people suffer from whiplash, and it's usually a car wreck. But there's somebody, and there's no real reason for it. But there's such pain in the back of your neck here. It's so difficult sometimes to just get your head up. Side to side, you're okay, but you get your, you always have to look down. You get your help. Well, look up in Jesus' name. Be healed right now by the power of God in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Lord, we give you praise and glory. 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 Hallelujah. Energy. Lord, I thank you right now. People that are older, but even some younger people. Energy level. Lord, I thank you for the injection of the divine presence of the virtue of God and of the energy of God into your body in Jesus name right now the word of God says that he will quicken you he will quicken your mortal body the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead I thank you for that quickening that's flowing right now into people's bodies in Jesus name resurrected power resurrection power quickening bodies right now in Jesus name with the divine strength and energy of God in Jesus name I hear it again. The sugar problem. Somebody on this side, you don't have to identify yourself. Somebody on this side of the building, right here. I speak over your body right now. Right here. Another sugar diabetes type situation. It's this half of the building. So I can tell you, sometimes I know exactly who it is. I speak in Jesus' name. I speak healing. In Jesus' name, I command this curse, this infirmity, to leave your body and your bloodline. You're not the first one. Your parents suffer from this. I break this off your body. I break this curse. I break this generational curse of you in Jesus' name. I speak healing and restoration. If God raises you up in the power of the Spirit, hallelujah, and you will fulfill destiny, I speak the healing power of God in your body right now. Every person with any sugar irregularity, sugar diabetes, I curse you, you foul demon, you foul spirit from hell, loose the people. I break the generational curse of sugar diabetes in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. This will release the fresh flow of your spirit to the people tonight. All the people, everybody here and watching in Jesus' name. Life changing tonight. Breathe. Just breathe. This is not a time to pray. Let me pray. I get paid to do this. God pays me to do this. You just breathe now. Just breathe. If you can breathe, you're going to see the anointing. I learned in the years of the joy of our Lord. You can teach people to relax. Stop trying to put on something physically and just and do. Raise your hands. Jump up and down. No, no, no. Just breathe. Just stand still. Relax. Just take a deep breath. And let the Lord flow through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing will break through. Breakthrough will come. Breakthrough will come. Breakthrough will come. The devil is a liar. Breakthrough will come. You say, Lord, I want to have it across the state. How about across the states of the United States? Ha ha, ha ha, it's not today. It's not tomorrow. It's next, not next week. It's not next month. But it will come because I will recognize you and then I will raise you up. And you will stand before many and worship and bring the gifting of God that I have given you to in Jesus' name. You will do it. You'll do it. You'll do it. You'll do it. The time is closer. It's not very close, but it's closer. And soon it will be real close. God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. And He will sustain you. I will sustain you, son. Nobody will touch you. Nobody will threaten you. No illness, no disease will threaten you. I will strengthen you by my spirit. And you will do it. You will fulfill, fulfill everything I put in your heart. And everything I've spoken to you in the past, you will fulfill it. It was not a lie. It was me. And it will come to pass. And I will do it with you too. And through you. And others will help you in Jesus' name. That when the fire hits us, Psalm 103, verse 3, bless the Lord, 
will renew your youth like the eagles. He told me this is what will happen to all of us. An absolute miracle beyond what you can imagine. Not just back to 20 years of age, but then comes the, the fire, the purifier, then comes the glory to put to put you in the same class of Jesus. Ephesians 4.13. Come on. People don't believe it. I've got it in my new book. We will stand before this harvest comes in. We will stand in the fullness of the glory of Christ, in the fullness of the measure of Jesus Christ. We will stand in his full measure. And the world will have one billion Jesuses that will bring in seven billion Jesus on the harvest. Jesus, that you're going to do it, you're going to do it, you're going to do it, and you're going to do it, and you're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. He said, you're crazy. They said, that about Jesus. I said, that about Paul. I said, that about Peter. I said, that about Billy Graves. I said, that about all Roberts. I said, about, that about Kenneth Hagin. I said, about you and the preacher of the past. Yeah, we crazy. We got Holy Ghost through powerful and all the crazy. We are healthier, we're stronger, we're more blessed than the world. We're more anointed, we're more happier, we're more readier, we're more fired up and filled in. And we know God's revolution is around the world. Lord said to me, He said to me, Son, the people that are going to lead this end time revival are not young people. They're people in the late 50s and 60s. Come on. I'm qualified, I'm in my 60s. Brent doesn't qualify, he's only 42. You can make up for me. Awesome. Look at somebody next to you and say, you know what? It's really good to be here tonight. It's really good to be here tonight. Really to be here, tonight. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. Let's, let's everybody say, Brother Brent, Brent, bless you for your awesome ministry tonight. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to preach a little bit. And then I'm going to come back at the end. I want to... Do you, are you guys ready at the end to minister something? You want to minister some, something at the end? A little bit of music? Praise God. Well, you tell me, let me know, because I want to make sure, I want to make sure, give you an opportunity to do so. Uh, the evening, uh, we, we only have another four hours and 30 minutes, so let's get after it. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Isn't it wonderful to be back, be back in the high zone? I used to call this the high zone. I came and they said, air zone. Air zone. The air zone. This is the high zone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. If you have a Bible with you tonight, you want to open it, you're welcome to do so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 14. Amen. Hallelujah. The title of my message tonight is My Best Friend. I want to speak to you for the next six hours concerning my best friend. I'm not talking about the song, You're My Best Friend. Not that one, not that one. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Would you read it for me? John chapter 14, verse 16. Well, go from 15 on 16. So, thank you. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even, even, the, Spirit, okay. even, the, Spirit. even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, 
neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwells within you and shall be in you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Last night we talked about believing the simple, profound promises of Jesus. Tonight I want to speak to you regarding my best friend. We live in a material, natural world where one is one is, and three is three and one is never three and three is never one. So it's difficult for us mentally and intellectually to understand that God is three persons. God is the person of the Father God. God is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is thirdly the person of Holy Spirit. Over the years I have come to call Him Holy Spirit. I don't call Him the Holy Spirit. Come on. He said, why not? Because Laurel Klimak walk in here tonight and I did not say to her tonight, hello the Laurel, how are you? I greet my wife in the morning and I don't say hello to Shelley. She's Shelley. Holy Spirit is one of his names. See, Jesus did not promise us a substitute that was fictional or abstract. Jesus promised us Another person to take his place before he left the earth. Yes. It's one of the greatest secrets in Christianity. Which unfortunately most Christians do not know. Come on. You say why not? Because the devil has forbidden you. As a Christian to read. The forbidden chapters of the Bible. Come on. They are John 14, 15, 16, 17. You are not allowed to read those. And the devil has been enforcing that in and against the church for 2,000 years. Yeah. Because should you read those chapters, your eyes may open and you may realize, wait a second. I am not alone as a believer. Yeah, come on. Jesus in person is not with me because he's now a glorified person. He is the glorified Christ who is seated at the right hand of Father God where all glory, all power, all dominion, all authority, all have been turned over to Him. He is governing and ruling and reigning the universe, the earth and the church from that position of great authority and glory next to the Father. Yeah. To try and keep Him on the church, on the earth, is to deny Him His glorious ascension his glorious reunification with the Father and His glorious awards which Father bestowed upon Him after returning to heaven having completed the work of salvation on the earth. Come on, that's it. But here's the other good news. He did not leave you alone. He did not leave us alone the moment we're on the fuss and fight Amen. and bite. Come on. Jesus said, I will send you the other person in God. Not the one on the throne. That's Father. Not the one leaving. That's me. But there is another person who is also God. It doesn't make sense, but it makes supernatural. God never makes sense. He always makes supernatural. Come on. And He will come. And He will come and live on the inside of you. And dwell with you and walk with you. Now Jesus is saying this. Now remember. See Jesus had this phenomenal relationship with his disciples. They were best friends. They were always everywhere together. And so Jesus is saying. I, I want to transfer the personal. The key word is personal. The personal relationship. Which you have all enjoyed with me these last three and a half years. I'm going to transfer this personal friendship Camaraderie, camaraderie type relationship. I'm going to transfer this to Holy Spirit. Same personality as me, but another person. Yeah. Come on. That's Same it. divine personality, yeah. but another person who's also God. Who is also God. Amen. Yeah. See, Holy Spirit 
is the second most neglected individual Come on. on earth. Yeah. The second? Yeah. I used to preach in all those years of the joy of our world. I used to preach that Holy Spirit is the most neglected person on the earth. But he's actually secondly most neglected. Yeah. The most neglected person on earth is the born again human spirit, the inner man. Come on. You think there's little taught and said about Holy Spirit. There is nothing taught or said or explained about you, the new creature in Christ. When you become born again, when you became born yeah. again, you became a brand new, righteous, holy person in God, exactly like Christ. Yeah. You, the real you, you are a spirit. You live in a body and you have a soul, which is mind, will, intellect, emotions. Amen. But the real you is a spirit. Amen. Yeah, come on. Yes. And you, the moment you're born again, you become a glorified, hallelujah, Changed, transformed, reborn, yeah. recreated human spirit. And God's Holy Spirit then immediately begins to live in your spirit. Actual fact, He's the person who carries the salvation, resurrected, Zoe life of Jesus into your spirit. He oh. runs, the moment you say, I believe Jesus yeah. Christ is the Son of God, yeah. Holy Ghost comes and just leaps into your spirit with that Zoe life and yes. pumps it right down in your spirit. Hallelujah. And, your, and watches as your spirit man is recreated with the life and the nature of God. Come on, that's it. Amen. That's it. But then there's nothing said about who you are. Yeah, true. And all preaching even is directed to your flesh, man. Yeah. Yeah, come on, that's it. Preach it, Apostle. You know, here's one unique thing about God that I've learned over the years. God always, you know, speaking to His children, God always speaking to your spirit. Yes. yes. God always speaks to you as a spirit person. Born again spirit person. Yes. The devil always comes and speaks to your flesh. Yes. He wants to tell you all the reasons why you're not good enough, why you can't make it, why you can't qualify, why you'll never amount to nothing, why God hasn't called you, why you'll never be good for anything, why you're a failure, why you're a mess, why you always struggle, you'll always be poor, you'll always be miserable, because he comes and talks what I call BJB, bunk, junk, and baloney to your head all day long. But God lives in your spirit. God, who is Holy Spirit, lives in your spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> you know, I had the joy in researching and writing this new book of the Golden Glory. What I wanted to say to you earlier on, I know this book of Joker Donkey. The Lord said to me, this time you're going to write the whole plan. I sat three years with this book. Some of the greatest joys of my life. A lot of the stuff... It's history that confirms dates and things that are amazing. That the Lord said, you're going to study this. You're going to research it. I will give you the truth, the revelation. You get the background stuff and fill all that in. But how real Holy Spirit became in this writing and would just feed me and say, right, right, right. And this plan is set before us yes. Come on. soon. But also, as I begin to look into some things in history, I was shocked. You know what happened on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem when Holy Ghost was poured out? Do you know? How many of you read the Bible? I found out the other day not many Christians read the Bible anymore. Did you know that? It's sad. That is. Do you know the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 1? Yes. That day was a Sunday. It happened to be Sunday, June the 1st of the year AD 32. Here is the tragedy of the early church. History confirms the fact that it took the early church only 35 years from the day of Pentecost when Holy Ghost fell, everybody's drunk of the Spirit, running wild in the streets, speaking in all other languages, 3,000 people get saved, signs, wonders, and miracles. From this phenomenal outpouring on the day of Pentecost, it took only 35 years to completely excommunicate and drive Holy Spirit from the church. Come on, that's the truth. By the time the Apostle Paul died in AD 67, he was the last one who was still carrier Holy Spirit, his person, his presence, his power, and his anointing. That was gone. My God. And now. 2,000 plus years later, 
We still have not seen the restoration of the person of Holy Spirit to the church. Come on. We have had glimpses of it. We've had parts of it. We've had outpourings. We've had revivals. But you know every time the revival is over, we go back to the vomit of yesterday. Yeah, come on. That's the, That's the truth. Why? Because we want the anointing. But we don't want anything more. You know what that's like? Forgive me for saying so. I call that spiritual prostitution. Come on. Many people go to church on Sunday to treat Holy Spirit as a prostitute. Yeah. Spiritual prostitution. Yeah. Get in there. Oh, give me a good time. Yay! Oh, yeah. Then as soon as the worship is over, they kick him out the door. And then they do the religious thing. At least we can get some Holy Ghost during the worship. But it's not an intimacy of interaction. It's only give me my spiritual sex. Come on. Give me my kick. The main reason why every outpouring of the Spirit of God, every major global outpouring of the Spirit of God in the 20th century died, the major reason is because all people want was the anointing. They didn't want the person. Come on, that's it. It's like the guy who gets the prostitute to have the good time. You don't call her the next day. You don't go and see her. You don't send her flowers. You don't take her for dinner. You don't begin to romance her. Come on. We've never romanced God. Come on. The church has never romance God. Say, why not? It's hard to romance somebody that you're not in love with. Yeah. Come on, that's it, Apostle. We get up on Sunday and say, Oh, I love Jesus. Holy Spirit starts moving before people. What's this? Get this out of here. We don't believe in this stuff. Come on. Put on your hands. Sit down. Don't talk in other tongues. That's of the devil. God just healed me. That's of the devil. I feel the power of God. Now it's up the devil. Come on. Well, you know, what am I able to serve? They go worship him. Yeah. But tonight I want to share with you. I tell you, the Lord said some things to me this morning. So beautiful. And I want to share some things with you. Now, every one of you, please understand that every person's life and experiences with the Lord are different. You have... Wayne, you have different fingerprints than I have. Oh, well, you have different DNA than I have. And yours is unique. Everything about you is unique. Even the relationship that God has for you with Holy Spirit will be different from anybody else's when you pursue Him. Even the future that God has for you is different. It may be similar to in the same direction or the same career that God would lead other people, but it would be different with everyone. The reason why the church does not fulfill her destiny, the reason why we work a job all our lives instead of going from job to destiny is because we don't hook up with Holy Spirit. Come on. That's it right there. Yes. Preach it, Apostle. God's people live their whole life, most of them, Go from job to job to job, but never, never graduate from job to destiny. Yeah. Because there's only one thing, quote, that can lead you into your destiny, the reason why God made you. That thing is the person of God's Holy Spirit. Come on. People say, well, the will of God will show me. Really? So show me the scripture. Please show me the scripture. Oh, dear friend, show me the scripture that says, says Brent Luck, I've called you to music and worship and sing opera with great power. Show me that scripture. Why is it not there? You're called to this and so much more. So why is the scripture about your destiny not in the Bible? Because if it was in there, the Bible would be the size of this building. Come on. Besides that, in the New Testament, God does not lead you through His Word. Everybody preaches that. It's BJB. Yeah, it in the Old Testament, even the book of Psalms, 
I will lead you by my word. The word is allotted into your path and so on. I will lead you by my Why? Because they could not, the people could not possess Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Because they could not be born again. Because Jesus hadn't come yet. Because Jesus hadn't died yet. Because Jesus wasn't risen yet. Because Jesus had not yet given them a new covenant of salvation whereby they could receive Holy Spirit. Come on, preacher. Salvation and Holy Spirit. My God. So Jesus must have lied to us. Well, most people portray the fact or a reality, which is false, that Jesus lied to us. He said he's going back to the Father. No, he's here. We welcome him in church every Sunday. We say he lives in our hearts. We say he's only present. He's not. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. So why does the devil have you believe that to make sure that you never stop and say, wait a minute, he's not here. Who is here? Because as long as you're trying to chase Jesus and religious devils try to convince you he's here, you're chasing, you're chasing what is fake. Come on. Because he's with the Father. Yeah. That's the whole purpose why there's an overemphasis on Jesus in the church. Overemphasis not about his glory, but something that goes against his glory. Because his glory is for him to be in heaven. Yes. Yes. Come on. Mm-hmm. Preach yeah. it. That's the truth. But as long as we are religiously trying to chase Jesus. And sing stupid songs like, Somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. The shadows? You won't find him anywhere. He's with the Father. But in the shadows? Dear God. Come on. So the devil successfully has bewitched the church for 2,000 years to believe lies about Jesus. That he's here, that he's in the earth, he's in your heart, he's omnipresent, he's everywhere. So we keep on chasing Jesus, Jesus. Jesus said, when I return to the Father, leave me alone. Ask me nothing, leave me alone. And I will not leave you alone. I'm not turning you over to a book. Not even the word of God. I'm turning you over to God the Holy Spirit. Come on. Because even if he had given us the New Testament epistles without Holy Spirit, it would have been immediately converted into a religion. Yes, come on. And the church got rid of Holy Spirit in AD 67 and converted Christianity into a religion. Come on, that's it. A set of rules and regulations and teachings and doctrines. Welcome to the Academy of Religious Christianity without Holy Spirit. Come on. The fire of God will soon come and burn all this up and destroy all of religious Christianity. And most Christians, by the time it's done, would have nothing left. That's the truth. Right there. But Jesus said, I'm sending you my Holy Spirit, the third person of God, in person. So that you may have relationship with Him. Closeness, intimacy. You know the days of the joy revival? The Lord said to me, I want you to preach the gospel of Holy Spirit. See, we never get this thing right. You preach the gospel of salvation about Jesus Christ and the lost. Come on. Once you get them saved, you teach them about the revelation of Christ, but then you begin to preach to them the gospel of Holy Spirit. Come on. Because Holy Spirit is the one we can live and move with and operate with and is going to live and move and operate through us. He is the only person of God in the earth. Father is on the throne. Jesus at the right hand. This is real simple. How come that penny hasn't dropped yet for us? Come on. And when you try to get Father to be personally on the earth or Jesus to be personally on the earth, you're going to create a religion because they're going to show up personally. They will show up through Holy Spirit who represents them in person. Yes, come on now, preach it, Apostle. That's why the church I was raised in was dead. I was raised in the much deformed Dutch Reformed Church. We didn't believe anything about Holy Spirit except this. Part of our creed on Sunday, we believe in what the Holy Spirit are. Really, so what the heck do you believe? Nothing. Nothing. So the Lord said to me in the revival services, teach the gospel. Teach my gospel. Teach the gospel of the Holy Spirit. I said, what is that? He said, that's the four P's. Come on. The four P's of Holy Spirit. He's a person. Number one. Number one. Number one. He's a person. Come on. I'm going to use you again as an example. You're a great musician. 
you're a great artist, you're so multi-talented. But you know, if all people want from you is your talent and your gifting, after a while you get tired. You want somebody to be your friend. You want somebody to sit down and say, tell me about you. Tell me who Brent Luck is. Aren't you glad Brent and Melissa showed up tonight? Yeah, come on. Brent and Melissa Luck, they showed up, my luck changed. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's a person. Holy Spirit is a person, Lord. He's a person. He has a spiritual body, which can be everywhere. We don't understand that. He has a heart. He has a voice. He has feelings. And he is an amazing, amazing person. Yes. A lot of people still talk about Catherine Coleman. Today, most Christians don't even know who Catherine Coleman was. Yeah, come on. That shows you how far we backslidden. We don't even know that. This backslidden. Yeah, come on. You don't know who Smith Wigglesworth is, Otto Roberts, Catherine Coleman, Kenneth Hagen. You backslidden. Yeah. It's just simple. He's a person. He does carry with him an incredible presence that has degrees of power more than any kind of voltage meter you can ever find in your life. Yeah. Most Christians have never really experienced his true presence. Number three, he does have power. He has, does have power to do signs and wonders and miracles. He is God. He represents in the earth Father God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Finally, when I was delivered, if I may say so, from the Dutch Reformed Church, I backslid. And then on Saturday, I'm sorry, you just have to forgive me, I'm a dates person. On Saturday, September the 22nd, 1979, Kenneth Hagen always would say, did you know that Saturday, 22nd, 1979, was a Saturday? Well, you might think it was a Saturday. It was a happy day for me. Come on. <laughs> See, let me say this again. God works with us all very differently. I had an encounter with the Lord. I just want to mention briefly. I was not praying. I was not worshiping. I was not singing. I was not reading the Word. I was not studying the Word. I was not in church. I was backslidden, I was drunk as hell, God, I had oh, more than a bottle of whiskey in me that night. I was a flight attendant for South African Airways, I was in Sydney, Australia on a layover, and I partied all night long, about 2 o'clock in the morning, they dragged me back to my bed, opened my hotel room door, dragged me onto the bed, put the key down, closed the door, the whole room lit up. God walked in. He said, I am God's Holy Spirit. And I hear the slamming noise. Da, 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 da. After a while, I realized it's my whole body. They bounce on the bed like my whole body. It's like a little piece of rubber. And I felt joy and peace and love and glory go through me. That over 40 years later, I can still not describe what I experienced that early morning hours. He said, I am God. And he said to me, the church does not know me. Come on. And I said, it's trying to work. But I'm still bouncing like this. And I think, yeah, you know, that's right. Yeah, all we used to say is we believe in one Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, we don't know him. We don't know him. Then the next statement floored me. He said, the ch he said, the church doesn't know Jesus either. Come on. And I think in my mind, well, that's wrong. That's wrong. You know, you know, we, we, we know Jesus. And he says to me, he says, can you know anybody personally that you have never had any personal contact with. No. Come on now. Then he said to me, where is Jesus residing? I know that. We, the Dutch Reformed Church told me that. And finally I was able to speak. I said, at the right hand of the Father. He said, said how can you know him in person if he's not on the earth? Come on. He said, it is not intended for you in this dispensation, in this time, to know Jesus and Father God personally. But it is ordained of God for you to know me personally. For I am God's Holy Spirit. I am the third person of the Godhead. And you are supposed to know me. And so is the whole church. Many times people say, well, you know, people have these encounters with God. Do they really last? 
41 years later, I'm still preaching. Come on. My number one message. So many things in this book God's given me. So many things about to come to pass. My number one message is not the prophetic. It's not the end time revolution as great as all these things are. My number one message is still this. If you want to and you get hungry enough and you cry out to him, he'll come and show himself to you yeah. and you'll have a breakthrough with him and you'll start a relationship with him and you'll find out that Catherine Kuhlman or whoever else was not especially privileged to know him and you were not. Yes, you are. Come on, that's it. The only reason tonight why Christians do not intimately know Holy Spirit is because they've chosen not to. Yeah, that's it. We have the power of choice. You're here tonight by choice. Yeah. You live what you live by choice. You do with your life what you do by choice. We have the power. We possess the power of choice. Or if you would like the better term, you have the power of self-determination. Self-determination in the church is the number one cause for the church not knowing Holy Spirit. Yeah. What has brought people to that determined decision is, number one, confusion through the religious lies. Jesus is still here. And number two, not possessing a passion not possessing enough hunger, spiritual hunger and desire to say, excuse me, to hell with this. Come on. I'm supposed to somehow, Jesus said no Holy Spirit and I don't. And I'm tired of not knowing. Come on. Come on. And I'm, I'm born again, I'm spirit filled, I talk in tongues and I give a message in church every Sunday. Here's the message. Rondai Shondai, tie my bow ties, Suzuki Kawasaki Yamaha Toyota Mazda. And then I interpret. Brum, brum, brum. Come on, that's it. Oh my God. So I'm a spiritual Christian. Spiritual means you've been filled with the anointing and the presence of Holy Spirit. It does not mean at all that you know anything about Him in person. Come on, that's it. Even when we minister as powerful ministers and we flow in the anointing and flow in the Holy Ghost, that doesn't mean you know Him. That is your ministry gift. Come on. Even when you flow in the gift of the Spirit, that's part of your ministry gifting and calling. Even when you flow as a prophet and you bring divine prophecies from God, that's not relationship, that's ministry. A lot of ministers use their anointing in the pulpit and even their gifting and gifts of the Spirit to, to, to come and show people, see, I, I know the Holy Spirit. No, you don't. Come on. Now you're preaching. You are blessing people and you're operating in your ministry and you're blessing and you're operating the spiritual gifting that is part of your ministry call, but you don't know Holy Spirit. Come on. My God. So how can you usually tell when people know Holy Spirit? They just come to you and they tell you something Holy Spirit told them nobody knows. They'll come and tell you. Some of them call me on the phone. Uh, tell me some of the things the Lord has said. But while I was writing the book, people would call me, tell me things that the Lord just been talking to me for weeks to write in the book. They'll tell me. God's telling me this. God's telling me that. Does, what, what, what's this? Did the Lord say anything about this, this to you? Did the Lord say anything to you about this, this enormous fire that's coming? Did the Lord say anything to, to you about the glory? Come on. I sat at my desk one day. And the Holy Spirit came on me. I started to weep. He said to me, write, write down the greatest thing that God will ever do in this earth. I thought that was the harvest of seven billion souls. That is the greatest looking, but that's not the greatest thing. And he began to take me through the glory, impartation scriptures in the New Testament. Showing me that we will receive the full glory of Jesus in this body. I got it in chapter 8 of my book. It's mind-boggling, mind-blowing, absolutely shocking. We will be accelerated by the glory of God in our body as well as in our soul to be exactly with the fullness of the glory and the purity of Jesus Christ. You mean in this physical body? Yes. yes. Come on. Yes. It doesn't make sense. No, it makes supernatural, it makes Bible. Jesus said, the glory that I have, John 70, 23, I will give to them the same glory. 
Paul says Ephesians 4.13. Until we come into the same measure to the fullness of the statue of Christ. I spent three weeks on that one scripture. I looked at over 70 translations. I took the Greek apart syllable by syllable. 2 Corinthians 3.18. <coughs> So you look and behold in yourself, look the glory. We will, we will, we will, we will progress from glory to glory until we, we see our own image, the image of the Lord, from, from glory to glory. So I got on that. The Lord said to me, "I've got to teach you something here because you all got it wrong." What well, we say from glory to glory to glory? No, there are two levels of glory. Come on. I said, "What are they?" He said, "Well, who's he talking to?" I said, "He's talking to the church of Corinth." He said, "Right." The first level of glory is in your spirit, salvation. The second level of glory is going to hit your body and your mind in this final hour. Come on. The two levels of glory will make the triune name exactly like Jesus. Absolutely pure, absolute full glory. Absolutely. Yeah. It yeah. uses the word in the Greek, the word teleos. It means the absolute perfection of God's glory. Come on. Yeah. This body of mind as moral and as impure and as un imperfect as it is will be accelerated through the power of the glory of God to become for this last season of end time harvest exactly like Jesus' body exactly like his mind if that is not that I will exactly stand and look you look in the mirror and be looking like Jesus that's what he said you'll behold yourself in the mirror the glory of the Lord you will look exactly like Jesus Spirit you are, soul you will be, body you will be, exactly 100%. And at that moment, you'll have the same purity of perfection in your body and in your mind as you have in your spirit. And you will remain that way, have a perfected physical body Come until on. Jesus comes. Come then you get your eternally perfected new spiritual body. Come on, that's it. Yeah. Preach it, Father. I saw oh, it. I finally saw it. I finally saw it. I said, oh my God. Oh my God. I sat like this, I saw the shake and tremble. I said, oh my God. It felt like the Lord come to tell you, oh, when? It just felt like he put his arms around me and started to weep. Oh my God. I said, oh God. Oh my God, I've never seen this. I've heard it. I've even preached it myself. I've never seen it. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Oh my God. I see it. Yeah, that's it. And I'm sitting there. I'm, ooh, I'm shaking. I'm weeping. I said, oh my God. And, and suddenly, right next to my computer, appears a hand. I'm shaking with my turn, wipe my eyes, and what's, what's this? And, 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 and excuse me, a Bible, a Bible. And then, upon, as I look at who's what Bible is this? Then a hand appeared there on the Bible. Man, I'm so full of the anointing. I stopped crying. I stopped trying to clear my face, my eyes. And, and, and I look at this. I'm wiping my eyes. Am I seeing what I'm seeing? A Bible was a hand. I said, Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, my son, my son, all these things that I'm showing you and others that will now come to the body of Christ, these things I have withheld on purpose from the church because these great glorious things are destined only for this final hour. Come on. I have withheld them. I have hidden them. Then the hand disappeared. He said, but now these things will be revealed and then manifested in and through the church. You, my beloved, the church. Lord. Hallelujah. You see about the four Ps, the person, the presence, the purpose, the power and the purpose. See the Pentecostals, the old time Pentecostals, they just want to have the power. The charismatics, they want the presence. Anybody interested in God's purpose or destiny with you? Like, no, 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 we don't want that. Anybody want to know the person? No. No, we'll just go look for Jesus, see if we can find him. Come on, that's it. My God. Jesus, Jesus, you've got to be here somewhere. So we'll just get up and say, Lord Jesus, we welcome you in our church. He's at the right hand of the Father, don't he? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you will heal everybody here today. He told you, he says, when he leaves, don't ask me nothing. I'm returning to the Father. Amen. Come on. To be glorified and glorified and glorified and glorified. And he's making intercession for us dummies right now. Yeah. 
asking him to do all these things. All this stuff's about to be burned up now. Time's running out. So, 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 so we're going to practice a form of Christianity that consists of two things. We're going to be seeking Jesus everywhere. Okay. You all going to help me seek Jesus? Come on. Let's go outside to seek Jesus. And we can take the word and dissect it like a Pharisee with our mind, intellectually, academically, and try to make sense of it. Come on. Paul says the word of God, the New Testament particularly, the epistles, were not written to your mind. Preach it. Hello. Amen. Come on. In actual fact, in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, Paul says, excuse me, 6 verse 8, Paul says, the carnal mind, by the way, the word carnal doesn't mean sin, it means flesh. Yes. Yeah. Comes from you who speak Spanish, carne, carne is meat. It comes from the Latin word, really. The carnal mind is enmity against God. Why? Because it's of an opposite nature. Come on. Your mind and body have a sinful nature, but your spirit has the nature of God and the life of God, and so does God. I just like to put it this way. Your carnal mind, my meat head, is enmity against God. It is. And my meat head troubles me every day until... I run it into the wall. Then it hurts and it stops. It's, it's kind of been receiving some education against the wall over a while. I haven't had to do that for a while. I just rebuke it and shut up. But I promise you, at times I ran into the wall. You're not going to destroy my life and my destiny. You don't tell me how things are. I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit and find out how things are. I'm going to tell you how things are. And we're going to act on what the Holy Ghost says and what He teaches us from the Word. So shut up. Shut the hell up, you stupid thing, you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Only a few of us have that problem here. <laughs> now, if you should ever, should you ever, should you ever approach the Word of God? I wrote about all this in the book. You should not do so by yourself. You should never open your Bible and start reading. By yourself. Come on. Before you ever open the Bible, and particularly the New Testament. Now, I tell you, I was bold in my book. I rebuke the translators, which because they talk BJB. You get to the end of Malachi, you know, only two Italian Bibles, the books in the Bible, Malachi and Romanos. Only those two. You get to the end of Malachi or Malachi, it says, the end of the Old Testament. Some Bibles say, the end of the prophets. Really? What was John the Baptist? What was Jesus? What are you? End of the prophets. Then you get to Matthew 1 that says, The New Testament of our Lord Jesus Christ. Really? Really? The New Testament starts in Matthew 28. According to the Arco volume and the correct date that we now have, on Sunday morning, 3 a.m., April 13, that's lucky 13, of the year AD 32, 3 a.m. that morning, Jesus split that grave wide open when they rolled the stone away and came out. Whoa. The angels sang the light, the glory of God was there. Jesus was born from the dead, and the new covenant was born from his resurrection. Amen. Come on. That's it. Boom. Boom. That's it. New covenant. Jesus said to his disciples, I'm leaving you. I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know if I'll be back again. I'm sending you God, the Holy Spirit, to live in you, to walk with you. Did you know that John 14, 15, 16, 17, did you know that there are 14, somebody say 14, will you? 14. There are 14 things that Jesus spoke, which are recorded in John 14 through 17, 14 things that Jesus said, Holy Spirit will do for you as a believer if
14 things, sir, Holy Spirit will do for you if you enter into a personal relationship Come on. with Him. Come on, that's it, Apostle. Preach it. Now I'm going to say something that's going to make everybody mad. But you know what's wonderful having people travel with you? We have Prophet Tim and Deb Whitmore. Just stand up again, guys. I just love you. We love you. They travel with us, minister with us. And you know, I sometimes say things that make people mad. I'm more comfortable doing it now because I've also got a bodyguard here. <laughs> this guy was number two in America in karate, but it's now UFC when he was a little younger. There's only one guy that put you down, but you still gave him a tough fight, huh? Mr. Longstreet. But that's long gone now. Thank you. <laughs> so I have a bodyguard. <laughs> He don't look that big, but he's lethal. He's big enough, brother. He's lethal. So let me say something that uh, will make you mad. But it's the truth. One of those 14 things, Wayne, is John 16, 13. Jesus said, but when he, the spirit of truth has come, he, not it, he, the person, he will lead you and guide you into, what's the next word? That is the most powerful word in that statement. Come on. Okay. Now, you know, I was not raised English. My English is bad. I'm still working on it. I was raised Afrikaans. Can I preach a little bit Afrikaans tonight? Goedenavond, my broer. Hoe gaan het met die? Is die Heere goed? Dank die Vader. Kom ons dank die Heere vanavond en ons loof die Heere, want God is wonderlijk goed. Good evening, brother and sister. How are you tonight? Isn't God good? So blessed to be here with you. Hallelujah. Amen. So my English, I'm still working on my English, but, but I do understand the word all. I've learned that. Come on. It, it's kind of all-inclusive. Yeah. Uh, they taught me that the word all in English means nothing is left out. Is that right? Come on. Help me. Yeah. Yes, Mrs. Mrs. Brain. Help me, Mrs. Brain. Okay. <laughs> you agree with that? Okay. So, Holy Spirit, help me somebody. Holy Spirit, ma'am, is going to lead, desires to, wishes to, and is committed to lead all believers, all born again people, into all truth. To guide you into all truth. That means revelation truth in the word of God. That means revelation truth about the devil, your enemy, who he is. That means revelation truth about life, about the world. And most of all, about God. And also about the plan and destiny God has for your life. Come on, that's it. As we said earlier on, the only place you can get... God's plan of destiny for your life is through the Holy Spirit. Come on. Because the Word doesn't have that. But it's in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, so one of the 14 things that you've received through the new covenant of salvation is guidance. And the guide is an angel. Nobody says nothing. Who's the guide? Come on. Holy Spirit. Come on. Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, shall we say that God is an angel? Is that correct or not? No. no. Oh, well, it must be a prophet then. No. Come on. Oh, Lord. No, no. I'm going to make a mad now. Preach it. Here's one of the biggest problems. The church does not even know what a New Testament prophet is. Come on. A New Testament prophet gets revelation from God for the whole ship, right. the whole body. Right. Yeah. Only in cases of exception, need, emergency, death, trial, when the, the person can't hear from God, yeah. will God send the prophet to give a new word. Right. The on. prophet will just confirm what God has said, right. but only give a new word in emergency situations. 99% of the time, God wants you to hear from the true guide, Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. So we have a lot of junk to preach. Preach it. Yeah. That's it. I remember way back sometime I was prophesying over people, and the Lord said to me, Shut up. Shut your mouth. I was in a meeting. I mean, I said, Lord, give me a break. I'm right here in the holy city of America, Tulsa, Jerusalem. I mean, what, what, what are you doing to me? He tells me, shut up. I said, I'm prophesying in a revival service in the holy city of America, Tulsa, Jerusalem. God tells me, shut up. 
Shut your mouth. Tulsa, Jerusalem. The holy city of America. Just like Israel is the holy city of the world. And Jerusalem in the middle of the world. Tulsa, Jerusalem, the holy city of America. Right there in the middle of America. Come on. In the heartland. He tells me. To, he says, shut up. Yeah, come on. Friend, I said, Lord, why are you busting my jobs? I'm doing my job. He said, no, you're doing my job. Come on. Preach it, Apostle. That's it. My and just God. before that, I preached in South Carolina. I said, are you kidding, Mike? <laughs> you got to be kidding, Mike. Come on. He said, no, I ain't kidding you. Shut up. I said, Lord, these people are here to, to hear from you. He said, right. And they're here, they're here to hear from me, not from you. I said, but you show me what the deal is. I learned something. He said, it doesn't mean that because I show you what the deal is, that you're supposed to handle the deal. It doesn't mean that because I show you what's going on in their lives, that you're supposed to blab your mouth. You only do that in exceptional cases when I tell you to. I said, so why are you showing me? He said, so that you can, during your preaching, address it without embarrassing anybody and give the answer and you can preach it to the whole church. Come on. And if they listen to me in the preaching, they'll get it and I will confirm it to them afterwards. That's it. Come on. But you're playing Holy Ghost. My God. I tell him, I thought I was doing my job. He said, no, you're doing my job. Shut up. Come on. Now here's the amazing thing. I'm about to wrap it up here in the next two hours. <laughs> Keep preaching. Let me say it again. Let me ask you. Did you know there are 14 things yes. in the forbidden chapters of the Bible, John 14 through 17, that Holy Spirit will do for you? Can I use this word? Automatically. Come on, that's it. Well, here's a better word. Spontaneously. Yeah, come on. That's a better word. Yeah. He'll do this for you spontaneously. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. He'll do this for you spontaneously. Yes. Yeah, come on. Yes. Yeah. If you enter into relationship with Him. Come on. That's it, Apostle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let me talk about this real, real briefly. Sometimes we give people so many things to do. All you say to him is, Holy Spirit, I repent. Do you want to enter into a relationship with him? You say, Holy Spirit, I repent. Yeah. I repent for neglecting you, either deliberately or not. I, I repent for not talking to you. I repent for trying to chase Jesus. And I repent for trying to live some kind of religious Christian life. I, 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 I repent for being Frank Sinatra. Come on. I'll do it my way. I repent, Lord. I repent. I repent. Lord, I break free from the religious order of Christianity. Come on. That tells me Jesus is here and I've got to find him. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge, as I ask you to forgive me for neglecting you and ignoring you. I acknowledge that you are God in me. Come on. Number two, I accept, that's number two. Number three, I accept you as Jesus' substitute and replacement. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. My God. Are you with me? Yes. Number four, Holy Spirit, I'm going to spend time with you. And we're going to develop a relationship. And I thank you that you helped me to fall in love with you. People, this is Come so on. important. That's it right there. Hallelujah. I remember way back when you guys first fell in love. How awesome the work of God was in your lives and still is. You remember when you first fell in love? Come on. You remember when you guys first fell in love? Really, spiritual relationship with Holy Spirit. The best term that I can 
describe it by is spiritual romance. Come on. It ain't going to work as a works program. Come on. See, the church world has sold you to works programs. You go pray, 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 bond, 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 loose, 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 snooze, 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 whatever. Pray, pray, bond, 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 loose, loose. Preach, preach, preach. Confess, 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 confess. Work, 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 work. Get up, work, 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 work. Work yourself religiously to death. That's what religious spirits in the church have done to the church. Confess, 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 break, 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 ban, 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 loose, 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 confess, 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 break, 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 ban, 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 loose, loose, loose. Start again. Religious rituals of the flesh, man. Come on. Now, now, tell me if you do this ever. I do this. I wake up and I say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you. Here's your coffee. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Praise God. I love you, I love you, I love you. Here's your breakfast. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Lunch time. Here's your lunch. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. She knocked me out. Love is never slavery. If it is, the love is gone. Come on, that's it. That's it, Apostle. Love is never a works program. Come on. Well, tell me what, I'm going to pray, but it's God, I'm going to walk the swamp from I'm going to tell you, I'm going to pray, walk, I'm going to walk the swamp by the devil, I'm going to walk the sea until God hears me. I'm going to pray until the Lord speaks to me. Praise God. Really? The life with Holy Spirit. It's not to force things, but to flow in things. Come on. That's it, Apostle. Come on. Holy Spirit provides the flow. Yeah, that's it. Spiritual romance is a flow. Just like physical romance is a flow. Come on. You don't go bed at night exhausted. Just work to the bone trying to show your wife you love her. Something wrong. Thou art in a works program. <laughs> Come on. It is not love. It is law. It is not liberty. It's Hitlerism. Come on. Come on. Come on. I love you. Hitlerism. I love you. Come. Your wife gets a woman. Hell of you. Hell of life. Come on. At least you'll get good abs. <laughs> <laughs> there is a flow yeah, from God above, from the spirit of life, the flow of his glory. Come on. By the spirit, not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, not by, not by my might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, says the Lord, says the Lord, says the Lord. It's a flow. It's a flow. It's a flow. You know, when you connect with your wife, you spend time together, whether you're intimate or you're just verbally intimate, it's a flow. See, God is the master of the flow. You know, even when he ministers, we get excited, we shout, shout, we jump up and down, and the natural man gets a little involved. But you should not be after you preach, be so exhausted you can't work far, walk five steps. That means you didn't get the flow. You just hit the force. Come on. Everything in God is a flow. Everything with Holy Spirit is spontaneous. I tell you what, I'm going to walk this far. I'm going to pray. I'm going to talk to Holy Ghost all night long. I'm going to talk to Holy Ghost until I hear him. I'm going to talk to him for after, after, after three days. I'm going to walk this floor, talk to Holy Ghost until I hear from Holy Ghost. I'm going to just walk the floor. I'm going to pray. Holy Ghost, I'm going to give up. I ain't going to quit. I'm going to just walk the floor until you talk to me. You dumb 
minus, sorry, excuse me, you don't excuse me. I said, Come on. I said that to myself. You Come don't, on. you don't, 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 that's better. Come on. So, so you are going to walk the floor and pray until he talks to you. So you think you can manipulate him. Ain't that cute? Yeah, come on. Oh my gosh. You think because you can manipulate your wife and your children and your boss and everything, you can manipulate Holy Ghost? Come on. That's really what you're saying. Ain't going to happen. Lord. Now it's different when the Lord says, wait tonight on me. I want to spend time with you. It's different when God says, spend this night with me. Get in some worship music and just be in my presence. But still, it's not a force. It's a flow. It's a flow. You just get close. You get intimate and enjoy him. If you don't enjoy anything you do about God, if you don't enjoy it, you're on the wrong road. Come on. That is the truth right there. If you're aware of intense labor and not aware of intense pleasure, thou art on the wrong road. Yea, here is thou that I prophesy unto thee. Yea, thou art on the wrong road. Come on. My God. One reason why I'm talking about Holy Spirit tonight, specifically last night was completely different. Tomorrow night I'm going to talk about the revolution. Come the on. greatness and the glory of God. Oh my God. Oh, I heard the Lord say to me this morning, He said, I am creating a new path at this time. Um, I saw this big golden door opened and I saw this golden pathway. The Lord said, I have laid out a new pathway. He said, it happens now. He said, this, this is my path. Holy Spirit said to me, this is my path. And even for those that have walked with me, I'm promoting you to the golden pathway. I said, what does it mean, Lord? He said, I'm taking you to greater anointing, greater intimacy, greater clarity, greater power, greater strength. I'm taking you. We see the hour is so urgent. We're on the threshold of the fire coming. The Lord says, everyone who desires to stand before me, fellowship with me, love on me, and I'm going to take you to a higher level. You can call it a higher level if you want to. I'm taking you to a new place in walking with me. My anointing will be stronger. My presence will be stronger. Be easier to hear me. My voice will be clearer. Will be louder. Will be stronger. My anointing will come on you more often, more rapidly, more more strongly, and, and wonderful. It's like a new place where we're going to walk with God. He said to me this morning, "Extend the invitation. It goes forth at this time, Hallelujah. this day, this week, at this time. It goes forth." Hallelujah. I said, "We're going there, Lord. We're going." I don't know if I gave any points tonight, but I talk about Holy Spirit, I talk about the gospel of four Ps, I talk about relationship, I want to close out by talking about fellowship itself. People always say to me, you know, how do you fellowship with Holy Spirit? See, my life changed the early morning hours of Saturday, September 22nd, 1979. You know, many times people say, you know, many times people say, well, do these things last? Come on. When you have a real encounter with God, 41 years later, like I just said earlier, it's still my heart, my number one message. Regardless of how much prophetic revelation God has shown me, how much apostolic revelation He's shown me, Holy Spirit and the walk with Him is still number one. Yeah, come on. He told me that day, He said, you, I'm sending you to introduce the church. That's when people say, well, why did I not have that experience? Because... Because you were not sent in that regard to put up for years and years and fight the religious system. You don't know what I've had to go through. You don't know what I've had to fight and oppose. You don't know the persecution, the hatred that came against me. Christians, pastors, all these years. Hate when you teach Holy Spirit. And I'm going to say something that sounds ugly. And I don't mean there are great and good pastors out there. Great pastor that owns this book. But many pastors operate by a spirit of control. Yeah. And I control the people and manipulate the people. And when you come into their church and you teach Holy Ghost, you threaten their control of that establishment. Yeah. They are the Lord of the house. God is not the Lord of the house. There's no Holy Ghost there. Jesus is a fidget of their imagination and he controls the people. And, and I could not, for many years, I had no patience with it. And one day I said to the Lord, tell me about this. And he showed me and it's helped me to have more sympathy with him. 
because pastors, you know, they can't just hang on to people like people. And so they, they got to somehow make sure they stay there. They live, and the devil attacks them with fear. This one is going to leave. That one is going to leave. This one, every Sunday they stand in the pulpit, they look out there, and the devil says, that one is gone this Sunday. That one will not be back next Sunday. And the fear hits them. And the fear that they may lose everyone. Driven, come from the devil, drives them to do things. And before they know it, they're controlling the people. That's a natural and spiritual reality of it. And that's helped me to have a lot of sympathy with pastors. There's control. Now I'm going to take just a few minutes here. The close to service. The preaching part of pray. People say, no, well, how do you fellowship with Holy Spirit? I just sit in my office. And I just say to him, I said, Holy Spirit, I love you. <laughs> now, I love and worship Father and Jesus, but the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because he's the only one that's here. I didn't get an amen on that. Amen. amen. Come on. So I said, Holy Spirit, I love you as I love Father and Jesus. And I love you personally right now. And I embrace you and I invite you to come and fellowship with me. I, I, I embrace you. I invite you to come and fellowship with me. I invite him. Then I start just worship. Just light worship. I worship you in your person. I worship you for your presence. I worship you for all intentions from the Father and Jesus, the plans. Of, I worship you, Holy Spirit. See, most Christians have never worshipped Holy Spirit. That's why they're no worship songs for Holy Spirit in our song catalogs. Why? Right? Because we don't treat Him as God. So it never has. So I worship Him. Just very spontaneously. And then after all, I say, okay, I'm just going to drink your presence. I just sit there and just breathe like you. See about how much I love Him. And I just, I just breathe. Just breathe. And so since I'm not in control, but he is, it's different every time. Sometimes the anointing comes. Sometimes it doesn't seem to come. But I drink for a while. You know, when I was young, I used to drink a lot. One time, but I didn't always drink to be drunk. But I would drink. So I drink a little bit. See, here's the thing. You see, back in the 90s, that's the move of God we had. That's what brought 2,000, 3,000 people to some of our meetings. The thirst, the hunger hit the people. And the people started to drink Holy Spirit in that revival because they got thirsty. See, the reason why you had iced tea today or water or coffee because you're thirsty. You don't drink if you're not thirsty. That's the law of life, natural and spiritual. Why do Christians today not drink God's Spirit and not thirsty? So you'll be smart if you say, Holy Spirit, pour some thirst of God into me. Pour the hunger of God into my spirit. Make me hungry and thirsty for God. That is the most powerful prayer you can ever pray for yourself. The most powerful prayer you can ever pray for yourself. Holy Spirit. Don't ask Jesus. He's not here. Don't ask the Father. He's not here. Holy Spirit, pour spiritual hunger and thirst into my spirit in Jesus' name. I'm asking that every single day. No day go by. I don't labor it. I don't force it. I don't push it. Just ask him. I move on. Yeah, come on. Two days later, sitting at my desk, the hunger of God hit me. I start weeping, crying. Say, oh, Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. And I drink. You know, Brent, I used to get so fed up with it back in the joy revival days. I get done teaching on, like, like preaching a whole night on spiritual thirst and hunger. And afterwards, everybody come up to me and say, please tell us how to drink Holy Spirit. Can you just tell us how to drink Holy Spirit? Okay, sure. Tomorrow night, we're going to have a one hour drinking study class. But before I give the drinking class here, I'm going to go to the hospital because a friend of mine, their wife has had a baby. 
And they're going to prop up all the babies that were born this last day and give them all a notepad nowadays, an iPad, and, and give them a drinking lesson on teaching them how to drink on their mothers. Thank God these babies are intelligent and they can write notes so they can take notes and they can begin to learn and later that evening they can begin to practice how to drink on their mother's breast. Thank God for maternity ward drinking classes. Come on. Are you kidding me? Oh Come on. Lord have mercy. Everybody, take a deep breath at three. One, two, three. Out. That's how you drink. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Drinking class over. <laughs> I'm going to get back to the maternity ward to do a lesson there. <laughs> In five minutes, excuse me. Come on. You know what? How many of you have ever been stuck underwater or got underwater just to be there a little too long? By the time you pop up out of that water, you have to wait for somebody to tell you to breathe. <laughs> You're blue in the face, but now you just pop up. There's nobody to tell you to, uh, to start breathing. <laughs> Come on. No, you breathe. You're about to die. Come on. I have spent years of my life in ministry telling people, drink Holy Spirit, drink Holy Spirit. I should never have done it. It's like the guy just come up out of the water, you'd be under there for a minute and a half, you're blue in the face. I tell you what, you are hungry for that oxygen. You are going to suck it in and suck it down those lungs. <laughs> Gonna convince that you be convinced that you're serious, and he'll meet you. So I drink for a while. The few more things I do, I invite him, I worship, tell him I love him, and then I drink a little bit, then I speak. I speak in the spirit. You know, it's so sad. That most Pentecostal charismatic Christians do not know that there's a difference between praying in the Spirit and speaking in the Spirit. Come on, Father. All they know is praying in the Spirit. Now, let me make another statement that's going to make you mad. You just have to forgive me. Praying in the Spirit is not fellowship with God. Praying in tongues is not fellowship with God. Praying in English is not fellowship with God. If I pray in Afrikaans, it's not fellowship with God. Prayer is never fellowship with God. My daughter used to walk into my house and say, Dad, can I borrow your car? I need $100. I'll give it back to the end of the month. Please, can you help me? Thank you. I've got to go. We really fellowship, didn't we? Did we fellowship? No. Prayer is the requesting of the Lord. And even when you pray in the Spirit, you pray for others. It's not fellowship. But there is a way that you can speak in the Spirit that is fellowship. Come on now. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. He who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto himself, but he's making intercession for Jerry. No, 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 no. No. But he's praying the will of God for Charlie. No, no, no. He speaks mysteries unto God. That's different from 1 Corinthians 14, 14. He who prays in an unknown tongue, or he, 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 I will, excuse me, I will pray with the Spirit, I will pray with the understanding. So that's praying with the Spirit, and singing with the Spirit, or pray with the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 14, 14, as opposed to 1 Corinthians 14, 2. I will speak mysteries unto God. 
Took me a long time to discover that, and it's some of the greatest fun I have. Yeah, come on. You start doing it, and you start getting in the flow. But you say, you see, you decide, did you know that your will has the power to allow your spirit to operate? I had to make a decision that I will preach tonight. And the things of God are flowing through me. I have to make a decision that I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding. So your will and your mind controls the ability of you to pray in the natural and and, and control the ability for you to pray out of your spirit. You can speak out of the spirit. I love the ha, manga, uiga, maha, mm, ustika, mangunu, ayat, ng, a, ng, anguniu, ha, ha, ke, go, ma, mangu, in, a, o, n, 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 o, o, o. Say no, no, mangua, ingo, ang, mokek. Lago is here, ha, ha, ya, ha, ha, ingonga, ganga, me, kutati, kunti, mani, bacha. Yeah, is that Very different from his people. He's real happy. Come on. He laughs all the time. He's happy. <laughs> God's people are just sick, sober, sad, and sorry because they don't know what you've heard tonight. Come on. That's it, Pastor. There are 14 miracles that the Holy Spirit will do for you if you make him your friend. If you get to the place you say, Give me the hunger, Lord. I, I, I'm not there to do it, ready to do it, but give me the hunger that I want to romance you. And then when I get when I get done speaking this word for a while, then I just sit back and just listen. And when I get done, I just talk to him. Just naturally, just tell him what's on my heart, what I want to share with him, what's happening, things I want to talk to him about. And I just talk. And it's not a formula. I flow back and forth. Next day I might just start out. Lord, I'm just I'm the I'm the spirit, you see. I, I'm not a meathead. I have a stupid meathead, and I have a dumb old body. But I, I'm the spirit. Glory to God. So I'm just going to speak to you, my spirit. So many times I just started right there. Ijapa, Angnobua. Yeah, so cool. Vachaka. Manoloma pi. Ha ha. Yeah, Bosha. Kushika. Mashakitu. Gan. Don't you go. Ha ha. Yeah, Masuku. By a back to shoot. Sipu Shaka Mondalesa. Yeah, the Lord shall be a Lasha. Who are Manga Loka. They the whole Pazella go to Chica Mora. They the coach. Gala. Gin broke. Tell the good banker. Yeah, Masuku. Bosh. I'm so Chica. Mugan. To go. I feel to go. The Raga. Yeah, Masuku. I miss what you are. Who do that? Yeah, but no, not 
chapo 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 chap
Once you have that, you'll do nothing. 37 years of ministry have proven to me that one out of 10,000 will get hungry and yeah. get something done. Come on, that's it. Let me close with this. We're standing tonight on the threshold of the greatest visitation of God in the earth. Even right now, the Lord is opening up an easier way, a new way. I don't understand all of what he even said to me today. To bring you into breakthrough and into relationship. There has to be a breakthrough and then a relationship. Yeah. I took half of chapter 9 in this book. There's 16 chapters. And all of chapter 10. To teach in the greatest detail. And this is not a brag. This is just a blessing. To teach in the greatest detail of anyone I've ever seen how everything of how to go from zero to hundred with Holy Spirit, how to go from nowhere to breaking into a relationship with Him. Come on, that's it. Any person that has as much as one ounce of hunger, this will explain to you in absolute detail and clear to the point exactly how you can break out of religion into a relationship with Holy Spirit. On the first page of this book, the first page of the book, I'll say this. You have to read this and do this. If you read this book, it's what you have to do. How to study this book correctly. This work contains a substantial amount of intellectual fact of information as well as a large volume of spiritual Bible truth. The only correct manner to study this work is by engaging the person of God's Holy Spirit and His personal teaching ministry to every believer in Christ as promised by Jesus in John 14 and 16. Any intellectual exegesis of this book would only produce human understanding without spiritual revelation. Such exercise would result in the future private interpretation of personal theology of ever, which contradicts the purpose of this writing and its intended spiritual blessing to the body of Christ. For you read a word in that book, and every word you read, Holy Spirit, teach me. Well, there's one page you would read that God would teach you something from, and that one page He would teach everybody else something different. But I want to say this to you tonight, I'm going to close with this. We're standing on the threshold. Don't go now. I'm going to pray. We'll pray for people. Don't go. You'll miss the best part of service. We only have three nights. That's why I go a little bit longer. It's Saturday. We're standing on the threshold of the greatest visitation of God to this planet. Hallelujah. Would you stand for a moment, please? Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for tonight. Praise God for him more. take a moment. I'm not going to labor it. Or we're going to receive an offering. We did not receive an offering last night. We need to give people opportunity whether they give or not. Whether they can or not, it's fine. I'm going to give an opportunity. One day we'll wake up and we'll learn. Checks, make it on GHM. Yeah. We have envelopes. Excuse me. We have envelopes for credit card giving or anything. I will tell you this. We're blessed tonight, my wife and I, to be carrying a moment in ministry that is vitally important. 
the message we carry today in 37 years the message of Holy Spirit and the revolution, the revival that's around the door, is a crucial message. I don't understand why other ministries are not carrying it, but the Lord said, write the book, run with this. See, when I came in 88, he said to me, go everywhere and prophesy that your revival is about to start. I prophesied everywhere, it did. The glory outpouring is about to start. Be a part of this, let the Lord lead you. We don't try and force people, give this much money, then let the Spirit of God lead you. If you're not ready tonight, we'll be here tomorrow night. And let the Lord lead you and be a part of us and be a part of this ministry. Hallelujah. Also, let me say this to you. You can go to our website. Somebody say website. 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 Please visit our website, GabrielHeymansMinistries.com. I promise you we have a very simple website. I hate complicated. There's this four buttons you click. It says, bookstore, about us, teach, and give. You get all the teaching, you get all about us, you get the bookstore, and you can give. And it's all as easy as pie to give, even on the website, everything. Praise God. And of course, the book, you click on bookstore, and the book is right there. You can order it. It comes through square, square, handle all the financial thing and take care of everything. The book gets mailed out to you. We like simple. Father, we thank you for everybody tonight. I pray that from the anointed worship we've had tonight all the way through the service that people's lives are changed and will continue to be changed. We honor it for every person who came tonight. We honor it for everyone who participated in this ministry. We honor it for every one of you here tonight that are partners with us. And some of you here have been partners with our ministry forever. We thank you. We thank you so much for that. Of course, you can also sign up on this envelope for partnership if you want to, or on our website. Hallelujah. So I want to just take a moment here to pray. This is important, but it's not the main part of the service. The main part of the service comes now before we close. I'm going to pray for people. Father, we thank you for your absolute love and faithfulness. We thank you for these people. We love your people. We love your children. We love your church. You put a love in my heart 39 years ago for the church. A love I still don't understand, but I praise you for it every day. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone from meetings to sit in my hotel and weep. You know, the days of the joy of our, so many people would be on the floor laughing and shaking, but others did not receive, and I would sit there in my hotel room and just weep. So, Lord, tomorrow night, let everybody be under the anointing. Let everybody be under the anointing. Let everybody be under the anointing. Let everybody be changed. Let everybody be touched. Let everybody be healed. And I know that day is coming. The day is coming for all of us and all of our ministries that God will send us out. The day is coming. The day is coming. Now, if you're watching with us tonight, we're so glad to have, have you with mm -hmm. us. Please participate. Go on to our website, GabrielAmonsMinistries.com. G-A-B-R, G-A-B-R-I-E-L. It's like in the Bible. H-E-Y-M-A-N-S. GabrielAmonsMinistries.com. Write us a comment. Write us an email and sell an offering. Just click on give on the website. One simple word, give. And it's all there. You can also give by text. That's on the envelope, isn't it? Everything is there. You can give by text. You can give so many ways. PayPal or your pal can pay you or whatever. How it is. I don't know. But all these things. Father, we thank you for every person here. We humbly pray and bless everyone. And we pray a blessing on every person who sows. Like I said last night, you cannot sow into this ministry. We're not a great ministry in ourselves. We're great because we do everything the Lord tells us exactly by the instruction of the Holy Spirit. And because you sow to that, you sow to God. And the Lord will repay you and bless you and prosper you. Now and for all eternity in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, okay. Yes, Lord, I heard that. Yes. All right. Okay, okay. So... So we pray blessing and we thank you. It's okay. We thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Just, just call your offering blessed. And thank God that He is faithful. And thank the Lord. It's a blessing to obey Him. Okay. Now, what time is the service tomorrow night? Where's my wife? Oh, sorry. It's seven. Okay. 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 Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to close the service. But before I do, I want to pray for healing. Like I said, tomorrow night, we're going to, 
I'm going to have a shorter message, but it's going to be powerful, praise God, and I want to release this new anointing. I'm going to release, we're going to push the chairs back tomorrow night, and we're going to pray and just let the Holy Spirit fall. I tell you, if you need the touch of God, if you need a new anointing, if you need a fresh anointing, if you need Holy Spirit to really touch you, please do not miss tomorrow night. Bring somebody with you. I know it's 7 o'clock tomorrow night. I know it's Monday morning. I'm going to have a shorter message, and we're going to get right in and release God's presence and flow. Hallelujah. All right, hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Tim. Has anybody, has everybody had a chance to give who wants to give? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just close your eyes with me. Holy Spirit, thank you that not a person will leave this place tonight. I know, I thank you through that anointed worship. You touched a bunch of people that was awesome in presence. And we thank you that people will leave this place healed in their body and in their soul, which is the mind, will, intellect, and emotions. I thank you. I just see that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We talked about this today. I just hear the Lord say, accelerated healing in your soul. Ex oh my God, accelerated healing in your soul. Accelerated healing in your soul. Most of God's people are held back because they're tormented through hurts and pains of the past. I'm going to take one minute to say this. It's so important. The Lord said to me years ago, He said, do you understand that the devil targets every baby the first five years of your life, he targets you to bring an attack against you, to crush your soul and destroy you emotionally, either through physical abuse, sexual abuse, every, it, it's different. Sometimes it's neglect. Can I just say this? People think, you know, talk about sometimes Jane Fonda that she's so squirrely and she's with the terrorist worker. That was her problem. She was totally rejected through neglect all her life she's going trying to find that acceptance and love she never had as a child her father rejected her so sometimes it's just reject other times it's abuse and all, all sorts of torment the devil sets that brings that into your life the first five years of your life every one of you have a story to crush you and you go through life as a wounded soul so even after you're born again, you're never going to fulfill your destiny because you're wounded in your soul. You struggle. You can't get over it. You can't forgive. You can't get past it. And the, the devil keeps tormenting you with it. And the Lord said to me, I want you to start cursing it. We even have to talk about this today. In Jesus' name, I curse the pain and the wounds of the abuse of the soul man. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the progressive healer of the wounded soul. For every person, people watching, people here, everywhere. I speak, and but I say, Lord, we ask you, the revival, the revolution, the glory is around the corner. We need you, Lord, to bring forth an accelerated process. It takes so long to heal the wounds of the soul. Lord, accelerate this process. Accelerate it supernaturally. Even let there be, let there be a, a time or, or, or when you will begin to heal the wounds of 20, 30, 40 years yeah. in 20, 30, 40 seconds. Yes. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Every one of you here tonight that still feels the pain of neglect, suffering, and hurt, and attack against your soul. I'm telling you this tonight. God loves you tenderly. Yes, he cares for you passionately. His heart is for you deeply. Amen. Look up here one moment. I had my share of pain the first few years of my life. Suffered a lot of rejection. And one day, Holy Spirit said to me, go stand in front of the mirror, I want to help you. I went to stand in front of the mirror. He said to me, look in that mirror. He said, the person you're looking at there, Long before there was time, Father God spoke and said, I'm going to create a family of people. And he began to open his heart and bring forth a person. Holy Spirit said to me, he showed that person to Jesus and I. And we were so excited. We began to shout and jump up and down and said, we've got to have. 
He said, there was a time before time when Father opened his chest and pulled you out. And Jesus and I saw you. We fell in love with you. And we said, Father, we have to have this one. You have to create him. He said, the, the very reason that you created, the very fact that you created and that you're looking at that mirror means that when we saw you, we loved you. We fell in love with you. We accepted you. And we just had to have you. And we have you. Amen. And boy, a ton of rejection left me. Amen. He said to me, Gabriel, okay, every time you look in that mirror, be reminded of the fact that Father, Jesus, and I loved you so much, we just had to create you. We had to have you. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, oh my God. I can, I can go for that. I've been going for that ever since. There was a moment before there was time when Father God conceived you in his heart and showed you to Jesus and Holy Spirit. And all three the God did went wild and said, oh my God, what are we going to call her? We're going to call her Laura. She's going to be born. We're going to call her Laura Klimak. And Holy Spirit said, man, I can hardly wait to meet her. And Jesus said, I've already died for her. And I go to yours and finish the job. And the Father said, oh yeah, she's ours. Not just in creation, but for eternity. Glory to God. I'm going to close the service, but I want to do this. I want to ask for every person who wants prayer for healing. <coughs> Even if it's emotional, you can come up. It's fine. We're not going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put a hand on you. I want to pray for you before we go. Tomorrow night, we're going to just move in the spirit and party. We're going to flow with the Holy Spirit tomorrow night. Now, last night. Hallelujah. 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 Before you go, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. I know I'm long-winded. I only have three services here. The pastor wanted me to have more. I said, no, I feel in my heart, but just do three here. <coughs> Hallelujah. So I bless you. I humbly say blessing and speak blessing to you. Thank you for coming tonight. Are you coming back? You come Tuesday. Will you do some music for me Tuesday? We're, we're on short of time now. I want you to do some music. Okay? Okay. Praise God. Anybody wants healing, if it's physical, emotional, I should put a hand on you in Jesus' name. You know, addictions, addictions is the devil's ointment for a bruised and broken soul. Can we have a little worship music? Is there? Did you know addictions, no matter what they are, is the devil's ointment? Is the devil's ointment? A bruised and broken soul. Father God, you have a people. You have a church tonight. You have people. people here tonight are not here because they want a quiet Baptist service. These are people who want you. People are walking with you. Some of you walking with you closely. They love you. And I stand here tonight, Lord, and I speak in covenant with you. That you would fully and completely heal. Turn it up, turn it up, just finish. Every broken soul, broken heart, broken body. In Jesus' name. Last night, I shared the testimony, take me one minute, of the greatest miracle that ever came to my ministry. I didn't even know much about it. I prayed for a woman in South Africa whose spinal column brain was eaten up. I forgot the disease. She got to the place and the point where the doctor said, we have to now make a decision in the next week whether we're going to lay you flat. You have to make a decision. Lay you flat and fuse you that way or have you in a seated position, fuse you that way. Whatever decision we're going to put you in, if you decide, you'll be in that decision for the position for the rest of your life. If you move anymore, you can either go paralyzed or you can die. There's hardly any bone left. I prayed for her. We stood all there. It's a big meeting, five, six hundred meetings in South Africa. This was in 1991. Long, long story. By the time they leave, she's still, she's still sitting in the wheelchair. She smiles and says, Pastor, all my pain is gone. I've not been without pain for the last three years. She said, I just feel so wonderful. She's weeping. A few days later, she got up out of the chair. She started walking. A week later, she's walking around the house. Long story short, they went her back, took her back to hospital. They tested her. They checked her. 
there were five doctors on her case. We have some great doctors in, in South Africa, some of the best doctors on her case. They were shocked. They showed her all the x-rays, everything. The last one, there's hardly any bone left. It's your brand new spinal column with everything to okay. I shared this last night. But here was the, the greatest thing. This was a 91 and 92. 15 years later, or 16 years later, and I got the report from South Africa. They called her and said, we want to test you. She got mad at them. She said, we're a feisty lady. She said, I've been healed all these years. She said, no, ma'am. We want to do a DNA test on you. Honest to God, they did a DNA test on her. They found that the DNA of her spine was completely foreign to the DNA of her body. In actual fact, the strand of the DNA of her spinal column was so different, it, did not re it could not relate to anybody in her family. It, not even the part of the world that she was from. It was so completely opposite. There was no chance that they could in any way relate to her body. It was a completely foreign DNA. You know Robert Slavin, when he was eight years old, God called him up in the heaven, showed him the warehouse. You know about that, right? The body of Christ. And I mean, I, I just, I just, I just pray. That's a lot. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Praise God. Just close your eyes. I'm just going to touch you in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you need tonight. Hallelujah. Every one of you tonight has a great destiny. Just close your eyes. Just relax. You don't have to put your hands up, but just relax. Just put your hands up. Just breathe a little bit. Lord, I thank you for touching more people in Jesus' name. And I say, I know, I know in my heart, most of you up here are here for emotional healing. In Jesus' name, God will restore your soul 100%. to steal anything from you that belongs to your future. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why he said that. He just said brain. There were times in the past that it was possible and there were times when he did. I think about the church you had in Vegas and how the devil got in there and stole it. There were times in the past when the devil was able to come and steal. All those doors are closed. All those opportunities are gone. All of whatever made that possible is gone. From this time forward, this is for your precious wife and your family. From this time forward, it's no longer possible. You will excel and both of you together and fulfill everything God has for you. And it's multi-purpose that you know that. You will fulfill, sir. I speak to you as a man of God, you're a man of God. You will fulfill. The door is closed. The devil can no longer steal anything of your future. Do not receive any threat from the enemy there are delays and there have been delays as we know now and there will be some delays still but he cannot and will not steal um, again or any more of your future and your and your wife it will not happen in jesus name he's done stealing from your life and he's done blocking and trying to steal from your future <laughs> and not happen not happen. It's over. From here on, you will fulfill. You, you say, I want to be the man of God that God wants me to be, and I want to fulfill my life. I know that's your heart, and you will, so You will. Because the past is dead and gone. And don't ever think again where you came from. God said, you even came from a place where you never fit in and you never belong. You were just born there. You don't have a past. In a little town in New Mexico. 
You only have a future in the big city of God's glory right on this earth. You cannot steal from you any more. I need to put your hand up, Betty. This Melissa is so on fire in her spirit. She's so hungry, so hallelujah. She's been such a great love and support to me. But there's a new fire in her life again. And, and a lot of it has been there. But there's a whole new thing coming. Of the formidable force of the spirit. There's, there's, like, there's like a new force of the Holy Spirit. There's like a new force of the Holy Spirit that's going to rise in this world. And the Lord says, part of that is securing the safety of your destiny. I don't know how that works. But it's going to be a protection. When you be busy doing things, her spirit and her heart will be a protection over you of anything that they would like to do. And then they'll say, oh, well, I didn't believe about it, so I can't, I can't even go near it. I can't even go near it. And she will fulfill her destiny by being part of your destiny and by times protecting your destiny. I never prophesied in my life to anybody before. But you will, Melissa. You will. You're one of the very best things that ever happened to me. And vice versa. And vice versa. Hallelujah. And this year will not close. One last thing. This year will not close until there be a formidable prophetic sign given to you. So you'll both see it, see it and say, oh my God, I don't know what it is. There will be a sign before the end of the year. spend time laying hands on you. I'm going to go quick tonight. We're going to dismiss. And we're going to go. I will spend time tomorrow night. I'll lay hands on you tomorrow night. I'm going to see an anointing God come on you strong tomorrow night. Hallelujah. I'm going to go quick now. But tomorrow night I will. Please come back. And tomorrow night if it gets a little bit late, I promise you, we're going to pray. And you can go. Hallelujah. Free. Heal. Jesus. Hallelujah. Free. Heal. Jesus. Hallelujah. Free. Heal. Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring joy. Bring joy. Bring joy. Bring joy. I'm, I'm going to need the time. I'm going to need some time with you tomorrow. I need to come back. Got to get you broken through here. Got to break some things off you. Go from her. Loose her in Jesus' name. Oppress her. Heart and pain pass. I break it off you in Jesus' name. I speak healing to you. God loves you. We love you. You're even gonna with Holy Spirit. You got you gonna you gonna get into a new river. And you're gonna say, Man, this new river is like the Dead Sea I just flowed on top. <laughs> it's so easy. The fellowship of the Lord is always good, but now it's just easy. Come on. Awesome. I just flow on top. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right then your spirit. Thank <laughs> you. 
come back tomorrow night. We're going to have Hallelujah. Holy Ghost night. Are you okay? You just sit back. You'll be okay. You don't have to do nothing. I just want to pray. That's where you go wrong. You see, you see, okay, let, let me teach you something to change your life. Look at me. Look at me. When you pray in the spirit, where's the microphone? Okay. When you pray, when you pray in the spirit, ma'am, tell me your name here. What's name? Rebecca. Okay. See, Rebecca, when you pray in the spirit, Jesus said, from your spirit will flow rivers of living water. Come on. So look, look at me. Look at me. So when you pray in the spirit, you're pushing from your spirit out. It's like breathing out. <laughs> when you breathe out, at that same time, you can't breathe in. Okay? So when you push in tongues, it flows this way. I'm laying hands on you. I'm trying to get the anointing to go this way. So guess what happens? Collision. Nothing goes in. See, that's the garbage that church will talk us. That's part of the religious system. That's why I said earlier on, just breathe. B R E. A T S. You can breathe. See, when you breathe, it goes in. You see, oxygen goes in and oxygen. It will go in. Oxygen and oxygen. It will go in when you breathe in. I prayed in the 90s in the Great Georgia Bible for thousands and thousands of people. And I helped many of them. And I said, go home, go lay in your bed, before you go to bed at night, turn the light out and just breathe a little bit. Say, Holy Spirit, start flowing into me. Next time I come back to the meeting, they're drunk. You know what it's like? Okay. Hold this up. Now, I'm going to drink water. Oh, oh my goodness. Why is the water not going in? Because I was pushing and breathing out while I was drinking. That's why they know it's not going in. You have to breathe in. You have to breathe in. Now, I know that's really complicated. It's like having to teach babies how to drink on their mother's breast. No, it's simple. Yeah, just be serious. It's just, just breathing. The Lord's on you. Just breathe. It's right on you there. Yeah. Just breathe a little bit. <laughs> Let me see. Now it goes in. Now it goes in. Very simple, Wayne, isn't it? Praise God. Come on, let me pray. Lord, healing, glory, and grace. Oh, 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 Denise, you're going to see some stuff, lady. You're going to see some stuff. Holy Ghost says, Lord, where's that next level breakthrough? He's going to show you this dawn thing. And when you see it, you're going to say, Ah, we take it, Lord. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. No, 7 o'clock Western time. 
Excuse me, 7 o'clock Arizona, California time. Arizona time. No, no, it's 10 o'clock on the East Coast, but you're going to stay up all night long doing nothing anyway. So watch us. Come back tomorrow night. Hallelujah. Party night. Hallelujah.